This is our last segment from chapter 5. We're going to cover Kepler's laws. Now, Johannes Kepler, he worked out laws for the motion of the planets and where they should be, where you should find them, based on detailed observations done by his predecessor. Um, he had mounds and mounds and mounds for that day. Mounds and mounds and mounds. Notebook after notebook after notebook of detailed observation on the motion of the planets through the skies with time and place and attitude and everything and so he took those and worked out his laws and his laws it turns out are actually a consequence of gravitational attraction and centripetal acceleration right so Kepler's first law each planet orbits uh, in an ellipse with the Sun at a focus right so an ellipse has two foci You've probably done this with a couple of pencils before. You take a string that's of a given length. You wrap it. You have a pencil here and a pencil there, sort of or a pen stuck into the page. And you go around and you form an ellipse. Now, the ellipse that the Earth goes around is very close to a circle. Nope. Right? The ellipse the Earth goes around in is a very close to a circle. We normally think of it as a circle, but Kepler was able to... Um, to determine that yeah all the planets are going around in an ellipse. Um, so if you uh, draw a line from the planet to the Sun one of the things that happens as the planets go around is that they sweep out equal areas over a given time. So if over a month you go from here to there then over here it's a month from there to head there because this area and that area happen to be the same area, the same here. So when you're farther away on the far side of the ellipse, you are a moving slower rotationally. And when you're close in, you're moving faster rotationally, right? So the planets don't quite go at constant speed as they go around the, around the sun. And they don't go at constant speed because they're going in an ellipse, not a circle. They went in a circle, it'd be constant speed, right? Newton's third law. Newton worked out that the period of rotate uh, the period of the planet going around the sun. So for the Earth, the period is one year, right? Um, the period of one divided by the period of the other with them squared is proportional to the ratio of the radii cubed, right? So this, this equation is valid only for comparing two small masses operate, uh, orbiting around a large one, right? So if we tried to do, um, uh, if we tried to do something the size of Venus going around the Earth along with the Moon going around the Earth, it wouldn't work because Venus is comparable in size to the Earth. It only works, these equations really, now Kepler didn't know this, Right? We know this now. Kepler didn't know this. It only works because the sun is so much more massive than the planets. Right? Because the sun is so much more massive than the planets, this equation, this relationship between the period of, say, Earth and the period of Mars, and the distance between that the Earth orbits at and the distance that Mars orbits at, this relationship is valid because the sun is so much more massive than either planet. Alright, that's it for chapter 5.